Good morning. So, uh, today's lecture I will cover the synthesis of uh, quinolins and isoquinolins. All of you know the quinolins and isoquinolins belong to the fused heterocycles in which one of the rings uh, is benzene, other is uh, pyridine, and uh, their basic structures are written in a manner where nitrogen occupies position 1 in quinoline and isoquinoline is uh, having the nitrogen at the position number 2. So, all of you know the numbering starts from 1, 2, 3, 4 this way. Uh, in case of isoquinoline 1, 2 and 3 and this nuclei are very important. Uh, in the pharmaceutical industry as well as natural products chemistry and uh, also many of you know that quinine is in uh, natural products in which quinoline moiety is uh, found and uh, isoquinoline also is a nucleus where uh, uh, which can be found in a very famous natural product very famous natural products. Uh, it is little difficult to visualize, but it is there in the structure of morphine. It is not exactly the aromatic one, but it is a uh, hydro aromatic one. Okay, so, likewise then uh, there are other molecules like camptothacins, it is a quinoline alkaloid. Uh, I will just write the name structure uh, you can find out from the Google. Campothesin, camptothesin. Uh, it belongs to an indole alkaloid and there are other pharmaceutical industries, uh, pharmaceutical comp comp compounds like chloroquine, primaquines, they all belong to the quinoline group of compounds. Uh, then one more uh, I think uh, very important class of, very important class of uh, antibiotic uh, is known uh, which is known as fluxacin. I do not know how many of you know or not um, fluxacin. For fluxacin actually again uh, it belongs to quinoline nucleus or rather it contains quinoline nucleus, but uh, more precisely it contains this uh, quinolone nucleus, quinolone nucleus and uh, this is a very powerful antibiotic next to um, beta lactams. Fluxacins all are very useful in day to day life. Uh, many of you also have heard of, I mean, this is this fluxacin, normally the parent one the, that is more popular in the market called ofluxacin, ofluxacins. And some of you probably have heard of Nortflox TZ. This is a very common medicine, Nortflox TZ. What is that? Uh, TZ is uh, Trinidazole, means it is an, again a heterocyclic molecule is an azole derivative and uh, not flux means not fluxacin. Not fluxacin means basically the uh, it is a O fluxacin with one less carbon. Okay. So, that means it's a combination of the trinidazole and the fluxacin. Okay. So, that means what I am trying to say uh, that uh, these sort of compounds are very useful especially quinolines and isoquinolines. Um, quinolines are, um, um, is uh, more known all of you know it is uh, some of the synthetic compounds are antimalarials right like chloroquines, primaquines and there are uh, okay. And then isocolorine in addition to the um, uh, morphine in which the isocolorine is there, there are other molecules called papaverine, barberine, alkaloids, many many alkaloids also uh, will have this isocolorine moiety, but most cases though they are not aromatic. Um, partly aromatic, partly non-aromatic. That means this nitrogen containing part is non-aromatic. But in any case, uh, in all of the cases, this uh, the synthetic st strategies are very similar. Synthetic is very similar. Let us begin with um, quinoline 
and I am sure some of you know some of these things, but uh, we will have one or two few or one or few uh, new um, synthesis. So, how do we approach? Uh, if you uh, write this structure, uh, you can uh, very quickly uh, visualize that the retrosynthesis, retrosynthesis requires um, uh, cleavage in the vicinity of nitrogen. That means, uh, quinoline uh, can be broken into this aniline, right? So, this is uh, one of these ways that means uh, you just elaborate aniline and then uh, make quinoline. So, this is one of these uh, uh, approaches. Then second approaches uh, I think many of you know second approaches would be also a very similar in this case it is a uh, dye substituted ones ortho dye substituted or ortho dye substituted right. And so, you can go to the uh, quinoline moiety again. Okay. And the, what is the third possibility? There are other, other so these are the two major possibilities and in fact bo both are worked out and, and there, are, there, there is a limitation here. Uh, limitation, uh, what is the limitation? Uh, is uh, regio selectivity, regio selectivity right. Uh, because uh, if you have a substitution in the aromatic ring, uh, depending on the situation, uh, you can have uh, different regio isomers, regio isomers, and okay. And in this case, uh, wh wh what could be the limitations? Uh, here, what could be the limitations? Uh, the second case, second case, both the substitution now in ortho positions. So the inherent uh, limitations present in the first approach. That means, um, first approach can be avoided by fixing the uh, substitution already in the benzene ring, but th there is a limitation. The limitation is that the amino ketone compounds are difficult to make, amino ketones, right. So, like say, if uh, yeah, amino ketones uh, are aromatic ketones uh, are difficult to um, are difficult to be difficult to prepare. So, uh, but um, depending, it all depends on the situation wh which you want, and um, in some cases the reaction conditions also is very important. The third approach could be it is not not that well known though. What is the third approach? It could be third approach could be yes. So we have uh, two important possibilities. Third approach could be uh, you you start from a, a pyridine nucleus, right? You start from pyridine nucleus, and uh, well, of course, uh, you have to have a di substituted pyridine, di, di substituted pyridine, and then uh, you can elaborate and uh, this into the quinoline. But it, there are not many examples in this category. There are very few categories here. Uh, normally, the uh, that is uh, adopted, it is called bench annulation. But basically, what you do, you uh, do the re ring construction. And right, and the fourth category actually. So, so these are all the should, okay. Fourth category there are or many other things that means you can obviously uh, permutation combination wise simultaneously you can do intramolecular little solder reactions, intramolecular little solder and construct both the rings together. So, but those are not the very popular way. Okay, the popular ones uh, I think many of you know one of the. <coughs> Um, approaches uh, or other methods, uh, I think uh, we should know by the name Combase synthesis, Combase synthesis, uh, what it is, uh, you can without knowing the, I mean, uh, so it is basically the mode 1, um, mode A, I should say, and uh, when I say mode A, that means the starting material is basically aniline, aniline derivative, and the example I am showing you here uh, requires a methoxy groups here and there. The other um, other starting material uh, could be uh, the commonest ones, commonest one in heterocyclic chemistry, right. So, 1, 2, 3, so you have 3 components that means this is uh, 3 plus 3, 3 plus 3, then obviously the other reacting component should be the corresponding 1, 3 diketone. Then the reaction conditions, uh, if you work out this uh, reaction mechanism, what you will find? First, we will form the enamine and then in the presence of acid, uh, of course, mild acid, sometimes heating is good enough. Uh, so, uh, it will uh, 
uh, have an intermediate a uh, ship's base than that uh, sorry nitrogen here nitrogen here and this and then of course uh, with, uh, with uh, the, uh, in the presence of little acid so this would give you the condensation product which is uh, one uh, two for disubstituted quinoline. So, likewise, there are uh, other ways. Uh, it's very similar, um, uh, uh, very similar to this comb base. There is there is a method called Conrad, right? Conrad, Conrad, and a few other names. Conrad, uh, Lim, Peck, right? Nor, etc. But uh, we should not remember this. I think. But what is important here? Again, a monosubstituted benzene uh, that means an aniline derivative, but what are the other, subst other substrate here? Other substrate is, is again a beta keto ester, it is a beta keto, um, but that means one three diketo compounds. Okay. And this is a peculiar reaction though, many of you know, this is, uh, is uh, condition sensitive, the reaction is very con condition sensitive. Uh, uh, that means there are two uh, different conditions. Okay, so uh, in under two different conditions, uh, you get two different products. Both are uh, regioisomeric, though. Uh, regioisomeric. Um, uh, just uh, see the uh, differences. See the differences. What are the differences? In the first case, uh, you will be getting the four quinolone. Four quinolone. Okay, and the second case. Uh, you will be getting uh, two quinolones, uh, which is essentially uh, which is essentially uh, two hydroxy four methyl quinoline. Okay, both same product. Uh, difference? Uh, uh, guess. Okay, I will I will tell you. In this case, the first is room temperature. You just uh, let it sit for uh, some times and, and heat, and then uh, second step you uh, heat at a high temperature around 270 degrees centigrade. Okay. And, sec and the, the next example, uh, just heat this mixture to at um, low, so low temperature first, then high temperature again uh, above 250 degrees centigrade. So, uh, how do you make it out from these reactions? That means, uh, from Amine to this this beta keto ester actually it first uh, I think uh, one the first case it is pretty easy at room temperature what is the reaction possible this uh, shift space formation shift space formation that is the uh, first reaction shift space formation then it forms the shift space uh, uh, with this ketone then uh, isomerizes to enamine and then when you heat it it undergoes cyclization so that means the inter in, in this case the intermediate is uh, intermediate is um, this one and um, this ester here. Okay, and the uh, second case, uh, second case for uh, this just by warming or at 40 degrees centigrade or isomerization warming heating, what do you do? Uh, you win over this shift stress formation. Instead, this amine now directly reacts with the ester, uh, directly reacts with the ester. So, uh, what you will find? Uh, it first forms this corresponding amide, amide, and then you have this other part, other part. Other, okay, so this is the basically the intermediate. So these are the two uh, actually. The, uh, so that means there are other cases also. We'll see as you'll see in heterocyclic chemistry. It's very peculiar. Under the uh, different reaction conditions, you will get different kinds of the product, different residue isomers, all these things. So, and uh, reaction condition is very important, very important. <coughs> Let us uh, look at uh, uh, one more example, uh, probably that would uh, tell you the how, how do you make norfloxacin for example. Norfloxacin, uh, if you remember uh, the structure of norfloxacin, it is a quinolone derivative, quinolone derivative. Uh, in this case, so that was um, Ornard method, so that gives you the quinoline. Uh, 4 oxo or 4 oxo quinoline and or other quinolone derivative. Now, norfloxacin will have again the same kind of thing this uh, quinolone derivative, 
but uh, we have an acid here, acid here. Okay. So, obviously, I mean the substituent if you follow this Corner approach what you have to do you have to uh, you have to uh, take I, I would say uh, I think you know my the convention E 2 what does it mean ethyl ester ethyl ester. So, diethyl malonate diethyl malonate and then if you react with uh, ethyl ortho format ethyl ortho format in the presence of acetic anhydride acetic anhydride. Can you guess uh, what is the product? See all of us have studied diethyl malonate reactions with most of the, the cases this alkali medium reactions alkali uh, sorry yes, not alkali best medium best mediated reactions sodium ethoxide, sodium ethoxide do this circulation etcetera. But this is somewhat like acidic conditions acidic conditions ok. Uh, in this case that means acetic anhydride is sufficient to inolize diethyl malonate. So, that means, it be this middle carbon becomes nucleophilic and um, ethyl ortho format uh, also under the presence of acid it forms oxonium ion. Oxonium ion eventually what it will form if it will, uh, this E 2 E 2. So, you will get this of this sort of ketals and then, then uh, it goes to uh, in the again all of us know this. Uh, presence of acetic anhydride uh, you lose ethanol to form ethyl acetate that is the driving force that is the driving force. So, you get the ethoxy ethoxy uh, methylene eth ethoxy methylene diethyl malonate ethoxy methylene diethyl malonate and this was the chemical actually was largely used uh, uh, by a company called Bengal immunity I do not know how many of you know or not Bengal immunity at least those who are from Calcutta would be knowing there is a place uh, called Bengali near Maulali there is, uh, and uh, just opposite to it there was an industry called I mean these are all past glory of Bengal though. Bengal immunity is to produce lot of PhDs in those days and it, it, it is to produce emetine as one of these um, uh, anti um, uh, what is that emetine is anti amoebic medicine anti if you have dysentery then uh, you can uh, take anti uh, anti um, what anti uh, okay dysentery anti dysentery that is better anti dysentery anti mimetic or anti my okay forgot okay then um, actually they used to also produce this uh, anti malarials this uh, this quinine derivatives uh, quinoline derivatives like uh, chloroquine, primaquine and one of these intermediates would be of this kind the school on derivatives and they used to use a lot amount of this one. Okay. Just to very briefly uh, how I will tell you that the that industry is gone now it is closed and they used to produce lot of uh, PhDs. In fact, some of our professors were in science college uh, from that uh, um, institution and in fact, uh, one of the faculty members also was uh, teaching in IIT Kharagpur for some time. So, I mean in fact some of them also went to MIT for postdoc fellowship that means it was so um, I mean well known so um, I mean uh, well established institutions as far as the research as well as, in, as in the industry is concerned ok. In any case so they used to make this sort of compound. Now of course uh, once you have this uh, if you react with um, aniline and uh, there is a reactions all of us know uh, Michael addition followed by elimination Michael addition followed by elimination. Uh, which will give you uh, this right and then uh, just simply hit. So, if you hit it uh, what you will get you will get this uh, that is 4 quinolone derivative that is it 4 quinolone derivative and uh, this ester here and uh, ester here and then if you use uh, um, of course, uh, sodium hydroxide under mild conditions there are 2 uh, groups uh, this, this amide group can also break but under uh, control conditions with sodium hydroxide you can go to the corresponding acid derivatives without much problem ok. And then what are the other methods based on only aniline utilization of aniline derivatives all of you know uh, there is a method called uh, Scrub synthesis. Scrub synthesis requires uh, now the classical one requires aniline glyceraldehyde 
and concentrate sulfuric acid, concentrate sulfuric acid, what else? And nitrobenzene, nitrobenzene, okay. And concentrate the sulfuric acid, uh, glycerin gives you the acrolein. So, acrolein, it gives acrolein, uh, that means, uh, that means alpha beta unsaturated ketones, uh, so in, the, in other uh, ketones. And then uh, it undergoes uh, micro addition, then in the presence of acid, it undergoes uh, fiddle cups kind of reaction. And then in the presence of, uh, I think all of you know, right, I, I will not write this, okay. So, uh, you'll go, uh, you'll go to this. This is nitrogen here, uh, and this, right? And then uh, this would like enamine. Uh, it will undergo the intramolecular uh, intramolecular um, fuel cups kind of reactions. So eventually, what you'll get, you'll get this hydroxy derivative, and this would give you the uh, this would give you the what dihydrochlorine, uh, dihydrochlorine, and in the presence of nitrogen. nitrogen. But uh, there are other modifications, and sometimes people use iodine also. Sometimes iodine also is an oxidizing agent, so uh, eventually you get this. This is uh, fairly uh, well known, fairly well known, and there are. Uh, I'll I'll show you one example uh, today, but uh, other variation could be you can take just uh, instead of these the classical one, you can take. Um, aniline and uh, any kind of alpha beta unsaturated ketones um, or methylphenyl ketones. So, you can uh, you know, think about other Lewis acid like zinc chloride or even uh, zinc chloride or even uh, ferric chloride, even ferric chloride. So, the uh, fate is same. So, just follow this uh, mechanism, you will go to the substituted quinoline derivative. There is one more, uh, other one more on the basis of the utilization of aniline. That's a little different. That's that has a name called meth uh, meth cone synthesis. Meth cone synthesis. Uh, it starts from again aniline, but in a stepwise manner. Uh, you develop the quinoline synthesis. Take the aniline first, then do the acylation. Uh, standard uh, protocol. Uh, standard protocol acylation means you'll have this. Um, Corresponding acetic anhydride and these. Now, uh, DMF and POCl3, this is a pretty useful reagent though. Uh, DMF um, is a Bilsmeyer reagent. Bilsmeyer reagent means um, it is equivalent to, uh, if you know what is that, equivalent to DMF, so that means nitrogen, right, and uh, this is uh, chlorine, right? OPOCl2. So, OPOCl2, right? This. So, basically, oxygen of DMF uh, displaces one chlorine from the POCl. So, this, this is a very active uh, electrophile, very, very active electrophile. So, you have a living group here at the chlorine. So, any nucleophile goes to here attacks this nitrogen, uh, this carbon alpha carbon here. Then uh, on the return uh, you lose um, chlorine. So, eventually it is basically one carbon homologation. So, uh, in this case, uh, in this case it is uh, uh, initially giving uh, an one carbon homologated um, product uh, which is so, what you can see now, right now, you can write. So, this is one carbon, this one is the additional carbon here, and then you have chlorine. You have chlorine. So, under the reaction conditions, of course, then you have aniline means it is a sort of uh, enamine kind, right? It is basically enamine kind of thing, and uh, it will undergo. Uh, electrophilic substitution, intramolecular electrophilic substitution reactions with nitrogen here and there, and then this, right? And uh, of course, uh, you are missing R here and R here. What next? I think uh, all of us can guess. Uh, POCl3 also in heterocyclic chemistry is a very famous reagent uh, for the for, for other than. If you have this amide linkage, if you have with NH, 
you can readily convert this into corresponding alpha chloro compounds. Right? So, you have an amide here uh, in the with the treatment of these uh, what you can do uh, as if you can analyze and to the hydroxy and that hydroxy is now that means phenol for example, phenol also can be converted to corresponding uh, chloro compound of course under, under drastic conditions uh, to this, but uh, with uh, amide getting converted to the corresponding chloro compound is very easy. This is standard practice and we also do in our lab. And uh, then of course, under the reaction conditions uh, since it is pure CL3 means acetic chloride right acid. So, amine comes out and so you straight away get the corresponding uh, chloro derivative. Chloro derivative. This is um, okay. Uh, let us uh, very quickly uh, look at one more uh, pretty powerful uh, reaction, a uh, very powerful reaction. Uh, probably this is, uh, uh, I think, the next mode. That is, that is, I think, I will write the mode B. Uh, what it is? Mode B means uh, so um, almost always your starting material should be uh, NH2, and ortho substituent is fixed. So in this case, it is normally the ketone, and Commonly ketone, and then uh, uh, what is the other requirement? It's pretty easy. What is the other requirement? If you uh, want to uh, build up a quinoline nucleus from the starting material, which is already fixed, so uh, this is a donor, that means nucleophile. This is acceptor. That means you have to have a compound which will have an acceptor and a donor. That's it. That's it. Now you have to choose the reaction conditions. Let us say this is R1, R2 here, R1 or R2. In the presence of acid, in the presence of acid, what do you do? What do you expect? Uh, you will be expecting a reaction uh, of this kind. Reason being, in the presence of acid, what you will see? You will see uh, formation of enamine. Formation of enamine because of the uh, all of us know first it forms imine, right? Ketone and amine first form imine, and then in the presence of imine, uh, acid, it undergoes isomerizations to corresponding enamine. So, uh, of course, then once you have enamine, and then all of us know enamine is a nucleophile, so it would undergo uh, nucleophilic addition to the keto intramolecularly to the ketone. And in this case, uh, you will have this phenyl up here, and this R1, this is R2. So, eventually, we will go to this compound. Now, under this, uh, or with the same set of starting materials, if you just change the uh, reaction conditions, reaction conditions, and just use uh, KOH and aqueous ethanol, the reaction is a little different though. Reaction is a little different. Uh, what happens uh, in this case? You get an enamine here. I think uh, I, I think uh, what I would say here uh, in this case uh, R two R two is hydrogen. Whenever you have an hydrogen up here. R2 hydrogen and let us say an R1, an R1 uh, is uh, ethyl, this is a case. That means you get the less substituted enamine, less substituted enamine in the presence of. See, in acid means you have a strong equilibrium, strong, I mean, a very fast equilibrium. In the presence of base, you do not have a very strong equilibrium. Okay. And it produces only the less substituted ones. And the, product, the product that would be formed here then uh, it would be uh, something like I think uh, best thing would be to write uh, best thing to write is the pH here and this one would be this ethyl group here and this R2 is hydrogen. R2 is hydrogen. Okay. So, uh, in brief Okay, that means in this case I, I should write R2 is let us say methyl here and R1 is methyl here. And so, whenever you have 
a an unsymmetrical uh, ketone. So, there is a likelihood that you can uh, alter the reaction scores and to get two different substituted products. Now, <coughs> There is a simple variations of these, simple variations. Uh, this, there is a variation, uh, many of you know, I guess, uh, Doebner, Doebner, Miller, uh, Doebner, Miller, Doebner, Miller. What is the, what is it? Again, so the the best thing to follow in heterocyclic chemistry, uh, what I said before, is the starting material. So we have been talking about the mode two. The starting material is ortho substituted aniline. So, that means in this case, let us say you have um, uh, aldehyde. So, it is very similar, very similar. If you look at this reaction intermediate here, it is just like a enamine. So, in this case, so wh what is done here, and since alpha is unsaturated aldehyde, the example I have picked up. This is a uh, reaction intermediate used for camptotacin preparations um, and use pyrrolidine base, pyrrolidine base in the presence of benzoic acid, benzoic acid so, and you can guess what could be the, the product. The product is the first, if you, uh, first you see here. The, the mechanistically, uh, what you can see, it undergoes Michael kind of addition. Michael kind of addition, uh, NH, this, then you have an aldehyde, right? So this is an aldehyde, and acid, acetate, and this aldehyde. What next? I think you can guess. Pyrrolidine. Uh, between the two aldehyde, the, uh, all of us know the one uh, would be more reactive than the other. Which one? Aliphatic aldehyde, right? So, uh, sorry, this is pyrrolidine, aliphatic aldehyde. So, it will form the enamine. Enamine, now you have the existing aldehyde here. So, it would undergo again intramolecular. Molecular nucleophilic addition right and th this would give you pyrrolin nucleus of course uh, this uh, this would be imenium salt and the uh, uh, aldehyde becomes oh this is NH and this, right? This would be this. And of course, uh, in presence of uh, this acid, benzoic acid is sufficiently uh, good enough to activate this OH group. So, you get the double bond up here, and this pyrrolidine uh, is hydrolyzed NH, and this is OH. Then you have to dehydrogenate, dehydrogenate so that you can get the corresponding uh, quinoline derivative, quinoline derivative, and uh, so you have to oxid do this oxidation up here, and but this is again a matter of choice. I mean, what kind of oxidizing agent should we be using in this case? What kind of oxidation uh, oxidizing agent? You don't have many though. Uh, what are the possible oxidizing agents? Uh, in the previous case, quinoline case, you have seen nitrobenzene, iodine. So, that means you have to use mild oxidizing agent. You cannot use metachlorpyrbenzoic acid, oxone, IBX, all these things. Uh, IBX uh, also causes dehydrogenation, but uh, the normal in this example, uh, which has been used is manganese dioxide. And wh where does it go? This is an intermediate uh, for. For come to thesin, right? And what is it? It's an anti-tumor alkaloid. Anti-tumor alkaloid. It's very popular alkaloid. If you just go to the literature, you'll find a plenty of references, and it's used clinically for the treatment of certain cancers. 
and uh, in our laboratory department uh, somebody uh, does research on this right and also got an uh, award recently by presenting this work. Okay. So, next thing next is the next also is a pretty inter interesting one. Uh, I do not know whether you know or not uh, this molecule is pretty uh, famous molecule and pretty cheap. What is it? Right, good. How did you know? It is very cheap, a yeah, 100 gram bottle, 100 rupees, maybe something. But if you uh, do just, uh, it is very interesting mechanistically though. First, boil with um, alkali, okay. then uh, you uh, begin with a ketone, of course, with an alpha, uh, with an alpha hydrogen. And, uh, what do you get? You end up with nice, cleanly, very nice reaction. Nice reaction. And so, what do you get? It's clean product like this. And uh, so, you should try substitute it quinoline. What is the name? Fitzinger. Uh, Quinoline synthesis, Fittzinger quinoline synthesis. So, uh, once again the starting material is an ortho disubstituted aniline derivative. So, that is what that is how you have to remember, but it is based on this and uh, mechanistically uh, quite interesting. Uh, what does it do? You have KOH, KOH can hydrolyze this amide, KOH can also um, break open this 1 2 diketones, right, like Holler Bauer reaction. Holler Bauer reactions. This uh, adds uh, OH adds to the carbonyl and then break opens this carbon-carbon uh, 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 bond. But uh, in this case, uh, in this case, oh, what is happening here? Uh, it is uh, hydrolyzing the uh, hetero bonds. So obviously, that means uh, you'll have NH2. The other portion becomes now this top carbonyl remains as it is, and this then one that is that was connected to this am amide uh, will have a linkage like this. That means in this case, of course, it is a salt here. Then you can guess, right? Uh, this is now typical. Now, once you have this, so basically, it is a variation of the variation of the Friedlander method. The previously the method to what we, the mode B mode B is known, is known as the Friedlander, where you have this amino ortho substituted anion derivative. So essentially, what you are doing here. For certain, you are making an ortho substituted and derivative. Then, once you have this, then you have in a nucleophile and an electrophile. That means amine goes to this carbonyl, and this active methylene goes to the another carbonyl. So, eventually, uh, you will go to this compound. You will go to this compound. And so, if that is so, then maybe we'll, if the time permits, we will come back to this sort of um, example uh, maybe somewhat later. And then, what is the other possibility? Other possibility we have not talked much. The third mode, and that is, so uh, it's a mode called benz annulation mode, right? Benz annulation. There are not many examples though, and uh, this has been published uh, from our department. Uh, what would you see? You start with a the pyridine derivative. Start with the pyridine derivative, then. Uh, the, uh, it is an ortho substituted aldehyde and then alkynes. Alkynes treat this with auric chloride, tin chloride, and in the presence of acetylene dicarboxylate. Acetylene dicarboxylate. So, what you will be getting uh, uh, again? Uh, you will be getting uh, tri substituted, tri substituted quinoline, but all the substituents now are in the benzene ring, are in the benzene ring. That means here you will have uh, ketone, you have ester here, you have ester here. This is uh, sometimes it is known as, uh, this is sometimes, it is very popular in uh, aromatic chemistry. Uh, it is sometimes it is known as Imamoto Asao uh, Benz annulation. 
Okay. That means if you have uh, let us say benzene derivative, of course, what you will get, you will be getting the corresponding naphthalene uh, compound. And this is a very fascinating reaction. Uh, what is the mechanism? Any idea? Mechanism goes like this. That means uh, this oxygen lone pair, oxygen lone pair attacks these alkyne, and this of course uh, all of us know the role of uh, auric chloride. What is this role? You see all these. You see these days you will see that gold catalyzed reactions. Many people, wherever they go to this conference somewhere, in you know, abstracts, at least one of them would be devoted. To, one of them would be on the gold catalyzed reactions. Simply because these alkynes are easy to make by Sonogasila reactions and all other persons. And then if you can activate the alkyne, see previously uh, we had very limitations uh, to activate these alkynes only with mercury sulfate and iodine. Okay. Nowadays uh, gold uh, catalysts or gold catalysts are many. Uh, you can solubilize gold in organic solvent uh, with the help of ligands. So you can uh, carry out many important organic reactions with gold. And thus, uh, you can also activate this alkyne, and that is what is happening here. So, what do you do? Uh, you have, let us say, this oxygen now, right? And uh, let us see if I am trying, uh, if I can make it. And uh, this is plus here, and this is. Is that all right? That means oxygen lone pair attacks this uh, sp carbon, and uh, which is activated by this um, uh, gold. Now uh, you have uh, these uh, acceptors. So what do you see here? Uh, what do you see here? Maybe I think I have made a mistake. Huh? Which one? What, what is the, not there? Okay. Now what do you see here? This is a diene system. So this is diene. I think I, I, I was right. Uh, this is so E one, E two. So if you see this this portion, this portion is a diene system. So it will undergo a typical four plus two cycloaddition reaction. 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction, that means oxygen here, oxygen, uh, this is pH, and then you have this double bond E1, E2, right. And uh, so you will uh, have what? Right? And uh, this one will have. Uh, a u negative and C L. Right? So, in, 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 uh, during the World Cup probably. So, if you just uh, break open this one and uh, it becomes carbonyl and so, you will have O H this is E 1 right then this becomes pH, then this is a u c l minus and E 1 right. Now, this minus means then uh, the catalyst should come out. So, it will come out O and O H is lost. So, sufficiently that means what you will be getting, you will be getting the corresponding But oh, this, okay. So it's a nice example of basically benzene annulation. Nice example of benzene annulation, but that can be extended to this. And uh, then, uh, very recently, just one more example I will tell you. Uh, based on this disubstituted, uh, it's a very recent uh, addition. Uh, it is nothing to do with this. Uh, the, it is example of uh, Friedlander synthesis, uh, or rather, I, I should say. A variation of the Scraub synthesis, and this is recent ones. What it begins with? It begins with again an ortho disubstituted uh, aniline derivative, but eventually uh, it is reacted with an alpha beta unsaturated ketones, alpha beta unsaturated ketones uh, of this kind, 
and uh, and the reaction takes place in the presence of uh, rhodium chloride and cord rhodium chloride and cord and what does it do uh, it's a typical uh, michael addition kind of thing so many of you know boronic acid means what it's an electrophile or nucleophile boronic acid is actually it's a metal boron is a metal so that means uh, just like in a sort of a grignard reagent so grignard reagent so it will but in this case it will undergo one four uh, one four uh, addition one four addition so you will get this uh, sort of cyclic compounds here and uh, as an intermediate so this is an intermediate and under the presence of uh, base that is potassium hydroxide uh, it gives the dihydroquinoline it gives the dihydroquinoline and of course all of you know uh, the next step is to basically dehydrogenate so dehydrogenate uh, dehydrogenation can be done uh, with uh, palladium charcoal palladium charcoal and one can uh, have well defined quinoline derivative with three different substitutions or substituents in this uh, pyridine nucleus pyridine nucleus okay so that means uh, in summary you have um, what uh, let us say quinoline up to the quinoline we have um, uh, two different uh, or rather three different approaches first is mono substituted uh, aromatics that means aniline derivatives then orthodise substituted derivatives and then uh, benzene annulation modes okay so these are the three different modes and then you have all different variants okay and different names different variants and the last one we uh, talked about that requires a uh, boronic acid derivative boronic acid derivative and uh, let us uh, look at uh, the next one next topic is isoquinoline uh, once again isoquinoline uh, uh, could be i think uh, i think uh, we have um, only two i think i should say two different methods for isoquinoline which are very popular very popular and uh, what are the two methods for the first one bisler napier napier lasky okay and second one, second one. So these are the two basically. I mean, that, there are not many. So uh, they are pretty similar, though very pretty similar. And um, pictet. Uh, Spengler, Fichter Spengler synthesis. The, and there is one more that is also very similar, but all of them actually uh, starts from a mono substituted compounds, mono substituted compounds. Uh, Bisler Napileski, what does it? Uh, so, you have to only remember Bisler Napileski goes to uh, uh, okay, uh, POCl3, right? POCl3, uh, Bisler Napileski, POCl3 uh, or uh, P2O5, okay, P2O5. And, uh, and uh, and this one, this one actually requires an aldehyde or a formaldehyde, okay, in presence of acid. That's it. So, um, whenever you see the POCl3, something like that, that means you have to have a carbonyl compound and a carbonyl compound. And normally, uh, what you do here, NH and a carbon. And this Na, the nitrogen has to be there. So that means uh, uh, this is easy to, easier to remember. All all isoquinoline methods will have mono substituted benzene derivative with a nitrogen uh, appendage. Nitrogen appendage. In case of Bessler, it's an amide, and the other case, uh, uh, Pictet Spengler, it is basically an amine. So this is how easy to remember. And then when you have an amide, so the likely uh, be, um, uh, reagent to be used. Phosphorus oxychloride, phosphorus um, pentoxide. In fact, uh, also you can use uh, PCl5 also, depending on the situation. Depending on the situation, you can use. And uh, and all of all of you know this method uh, 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 goes through or uh, this uh, reaction goes through goes through the corresponding uh, this uh, right uh, aluminium salt. So as usual. Uh, if you are using uh, POCl3, so it should be POCl2, and uh, this is this, right? 
and then uh, the typical uh, intramolecular fiddle cups kind of uh, cyclization, electrophilic cyclization reaction and you will get the dihydrochlorine, dihydrochlorine and then uh, uh, aromatization or dehydrogenation that could be done by paradigm charcoal, this is typical procedure. Only thing you have to remember in certain in case of uh, regiochemical confusion, you can uh, change over the uh, course of the reactions by you know varying the rea reagents. For example, in, uh, in at least I remember in one case if you have a POCl3 used then you will get a uh, compound and if you just uh, substitute POCl3 by P P2O5 you will get a different regioisomer, not different regioisomer, mixture of regioisomer. Let us say if you are I, I do not remember exactly, but there are cases there are cases you just from changing uh, rather by changing a reagent uh, you can uh, get uh, the desired product in 100 percent yield uh, in 100 percent yield. And the spectral spangler it uh, is very similar. So, the method and uh, which would require in, uh, in this case would be amine right. So, instead of the amide here you amine, but um, you are having a less lesser number of um, carbon. So, if you begin with uh, the um, plain amine, so you have to have this now Schiff's base. So, so, so you have to have Schiff's base, and to activate the Schiff's base, of course, uh, what you have to do, uh, uh, you have to uh, use acid. In this case, you have uh, uh, the example I have been looking at. Uh, it uses hydrochloric acid. So at, uh, once again, typical electrophilic substitution reaction, and you will get this now. What? What is the difference? In the previous example, you had the dihydrochlorine. Now we are getting a tetrahydrochlorine. Tetra and the method is same. Next is to basically uh, oxidize to the quinoline derivative. Oxidize. So what you get? You get the corresponding uh, quinoline derivative. Okay. Oh, sorry, isoquinoline derivative. Good, isoquinoline derivative. Okay. So, I mean there are other ways like see the, if you are interested I can just write maybe uh, one more method is there that is uh, all are very similar though. Uh, in this case what you do you first form the Schiff's base then you cyclize okay. uh, sorry for, uh, you first uh, I mean have this uh, required side chain then you form Schiff's base and cyclize. The uh, next one uh, that is known as um, Pomerange and uh, some uh, uh, synthesis. Uh, what it does uh, actually in this case you begin with an aldehyde instead of these, uh, these amine derivatives you take the aldehyde and then uh, you protected amine and the protected amine is taken. So, as usual aldehyde and amine when heated together uh, uh, ships base right. So, now you have this Schiff's base and the ketal and of course, uh, again all of us know both the Schiff's base and the ketals are activated by um, uh, acids. So, um, then you can straight away go to this, straight away go to this one, okay, quinoline difference. So, there are that means if you uh, take this as a third method, uh, there are differences. So, in Bissler Napoleski you get the dihydro quinoline and pictet spengler you get the tetrahydrochlorine sorry isochlorine and pomarange uh, you get the directly the quinoline derivative okay so i think uh, we have uh, overviewed most of the methods uh, just uh, quickly and see if you can uh, write the structure of this product here just an exercise uh, we begin with uh, a compound which has no nitrogen in it is a lactone then you have OH up here and then uh, reacted with aldehyde in presence of BF3. So, what is the product? So, what is the product? Yes, Saurabh. 
So, I, I mean, but it belongs to the topic we had been talking about. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll give you just uh, since we have one more minute, I'll give you one more problem, and uh, uh, th this has uh, some relation uh, to m our lab. And so hopefully, Gorabio uh, would be able to write this structure: propionic anhydride. First, we just at room temperature and treat this with the, then you get a compound and you get a quinoline derivative. What is the product? Because I gave you an example, right? An example of Friedlander example. Okay, I will give you the hint for the first one. Uh, can you guess? There is no nitrogen, so so this uh, this reaction is known as ox oxapictate Spengler method. Let us see. Okay, you can uh, expect this in exam. Fine. Uh, so you have to. Uh, the next one also is pretty easy. So, uh, uh, before you leave, I think you have to work it out. Okay. So, in any case, so we have, I think, uh, we have talked about most of the important methods, most of the important methods for the synthesis of quinolines and isoquinolines. Okay. Well, what we have done, we have not actually. Uh, 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 talked about one other method which you have already known before in the context of in the context of 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions. What is the method? Anybody remembers? Uh, we talked about a method for making quinoline derivatives.